Ecom Story Board, we speak to John Seifert, Chief Executive Worldwide Ogilvy, on the new structure for the agency and how they are keeping themselves relevant in today's complex times. And sunglasses and sports gear brand Oakley extends their It's OK campaign to India and it features model, actor, runner Milan Soman. Hello and welcome to Storyboard. This is Shibani Gharat. Earlier this year, Chief Executive Worldwide Ogilvy John Seifert announced that the agency would be undergoing a restructure which he dubbed as the agency's next chapter. A 39-year veteran of this agency, John was recently visiting India and we spoke to him about the new structure for Ogilvy and what will make talent stick to the agency just like he did. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much. Great to be with you. So let's start with something new. You created a new structure and purpose for Ogilvy. Uh, what were the factors, in fact, that you took into consideration while creating this new structure for the agency? Well, we really did it. We started with clients. Clients wanted us to be simpler, less fragmented. They wanted us to work more collaboratively with them. And they wanted to get the best of the agency from creativity to client service to production to data and analytics. They just wanted it to come together far more seamlessly. And we had become, over time, quite fragmented. We had many different brands in the agency to define all these different capabilities. And so we'd really kind of lost touch with what clients were, were asking of us. Hmm. And so they are the reason that we're really, uh, we've, re we've completely rethought and redesigned the agency structure. So it has been a couple of months this, uh, since this whole restructuring and redesign. How have clients taken the whole restructure so far? Well, the good news is we're winning new business. Uh, so we're winning clients now on the basis that they, that they see that we can serve their whole brand needs. So not just brand strategy and advertising, but everything that goes into their marketing and communications that ultimately leads to a sale or to a higher level of reputation. So clients uh, have been very responsive. It's worked in new business, and current clients are now much more interested in talking to us about how we can reshape ourselves around their you know, very dynamic needs. What about the employees? How, how have they taken the news? Well, structure? most of the employees, so I, I'm in India for two days, and I will tell you it's one of the most inspiring visits I've ever, I've ever had. Because initially, employees thought, well, I'm going to lose something. I don't manage a p and L. I'm not in control of my own part of the agency. Everything I saw for the last two days was a group of people who were finishing each other's sentences. Hmm. They were working together, they were highly collaborative, and there was a sense of team like hmm. I've never seen before. So my sense is, is that once we get over that sort of initial period of this is different, I'm not really certain if uh, hmm. I, I, I'm going to personally like it, once they experience the changes that clients uh, show in, in, in the fact that it serves them better, uh, employees will get on board. And so, uh, you know, we are often uh, seen asking this question to a lot of brands and marketers that what was that marketing problem that made you make that structural change or the change uh, within the campaign or the strategy? To you, if I were to ask you, what was that problem that made you restructure? What would that be? Well, I think it was we were just too complicated. So clients were telling us that we were uh, too cumbersome, that we were too slow, uh, they didn't know exactly who did what. Uh, they didn't really understand the totality of our offering. And so the, I think the single simplest way to answer the question is we were just too complex. We were confusing our clients. And in a way, I think we were losing business as a result because they were starting to find either specialists who they thought could do things that Ogilvy couldn't, Hmm. Or they just felt that we were too expensive and too, uh, too slow to work with in an in a incredibly dynamic time in their, uh, in their, you know, in their life cycle. So uh, really, at the end of the day, complexity was the, the fundamental problem. Okay. Um, as I said, you are one of the oldest hands. Uh, you know, You're at telling Ogilvy. me I'm old. <laughs> <laughs> 39 years for an advertising agency is a really long time, yes. especially for an advertising industry. How have you seen your agency changed in, uh, in these 39 years? And what are the changes that you have seen personally? Well, you know, the, one of the benefits of being in one company for 39 years is you have a front row seat to all the change. And I started at a point when in the, in the uh, late 70s, 
when David Ogilvy was still literally running the company and was a huge influence on me, all of his values and beliefs, his point of view about brand building. That's what really got me so excited to come to the agency. And then I stayed for 39 years because I had unbelievable mentors from all parts of the company. Okay, uh, you know, in an era where uh, retaining talent and hiring great talent yeah. is like the biggest challenge for this industry. Definitely. Coming from a person who has stuck uh, to an agency for 39 years, how do agencies do that? And how do agencies solve this problem? It's never been harder. In fact, I just, in, before coming to see you, uh, I spent the last hour and a half with our India team talking about nothing but talent. You know, there's a few things. One is you have to give employees, particularly the youngest employees, a sense of purpose. You know, they don't just come because of the nature of the work. They want to know what the firm believes, what its values are, what it thinks, what its place in the world is. So purpose really does matter more than ever. Our re redefined purpose of making brands matter is something that we're incredibly excited about. We think it's incredibly true to what David Ogilvy started, but it's even more relevant now in a world where some, some people question the value of brands. And are brands as important going forward as they have been in the, in the past? So we're, we're really excited about you know, what we think our purpose stands for. The other thing we have to give our people is a sense that we can look at their careers over years and give them the learning, the experiences, the tools that they know they will need uh, to compete. You know, Ogilvy has lost a few talented people over the past few months, especially Tham Kai Meng. Yeah. What did Tham Kai's exit mean for Ogilvy? Well, I mean, it was an unfortunate situation where uh, we parted ways under a difficult uh, set of issues. Uh, but we thought we, we made a decision that was true to our values and true to what we believe in and what we promise our people in terms of uh, what's expected of them. I, I wrote in the, in the note when, when Kai left that you know, we, we ask every employee in the company to sign a code of conduct every single year. And there's nobody too senior or too important to not be held accountable to that code of conduct. And so while it was unfortunate and, and sad for us, I feel as though we made a decision that was very important for our brand and the promise we make to our people. Okay, uh, Ogilvy also, you know, whenever I used to have like this final day conversation with Sir Martin Sorrell on, uh, you know, the last day of Can Lions every year, he would speak of Ogilvy very highly and, uh, you know, as an agency set up, as a creative powerhouse. What did Sir Martin's exit from WPP mean for Ogilvy and for you well, as a person? I, I lost a boss. Um, Martin, I've known Martin since WPP acquired uh, Ogilvy and Mather back in the late 80s. Um, and I started working for Martin when he uh, asked me to become the chief executive of Ogilvy nearly three years ago. He was unbelievably supportive of me throughout my career. So uh, Martin, it, for me, is a loss. But, the, but that said, WPP is so much bigger than one person. And I think what we've learned since Martin has left is that we have, WPP has amazing talent, amazing capabilities. It has to evolve and change for all the reasons that you know, have been well reported. Lots of new competitive pressures, more demanding clients who are looking for more value for their agency services. And I think we now have a new leadership team who, are, who is totally committed to doing whatever it takes to make WPP better and stronger for the next you know, 30, 40, 50 years. Uh, many of us miss Martin, but I think we all sense, have a sense of obligation as well. Yeah. He created an amazing company and we just have to take it to the next level and that's our responsibility. It is time for us to take a short break, but the conversation will continue on the other side of this break. You don't go anywhere, we'll be right back.